as we are about at that time. Can everyone see my screen? Yes. Great. Yeah. Great. Well, uh, thank you everyone for joining. Um, great turnout. Uh, always glad to see that. Um, we've got a lot on the uh, on the agenda today. Um, the big things are um, <clears throat> the update on the ADB, uh, the TR069, um, and I know that uh, Dennis and uh, and Felix wanted to kind of talk through some of the some of the um, you know some of their thoughts on on how the API kind of works with the with the uh, CM and 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 whatnot. So I don't know who wants to take it first, but um, I'll, I'll let. You, Dennis, do you want to go first? Uh, yes, okay, so I'll first start uh, with the recap of last week. So last week um, we delivered um, the, ver the first version of the integration, you, you, you could call it, I mean we called it um, CM to scale, which uh, implements um, <clears throat> configuration uh, management in of, of certain parameters get uh, so that they can be accessed from the CM API via the SCAL via SCAL as a provider. So um, with this with this in mind, um, I brought out some conclusions and posted, posted them on Basecamp as to how I see some 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 issues and some probably discussion points that we need to uh, finalize before before seeing where we can move forward with the integration integration projects so that all all the stakeholders benefit from it. So first, I have actually to ask if since we haven't uh, heard feedback. Do, does anybody have any additional feedback except um, what was written on base time? Hi, Dennis. Uh, Matteo here. So we spent some days in trying, testing, and analyzing your uh, solution that we received. Uh, well, first of all, thanks for the for the effort. Mauro was able to properly make it run and verify that it, it works properly. And that, that's a great achievement from our side. We had no time, unfortunately, to, to, to organize a, another call for discuss the details, but we can maybe do that, I don't know, maybe tomorrow if we find a suitable slot. We only have one uh, relevant comment, comment about it. So we expected somehow uh, to see a SCAL daemon plugin that will implement the uh, CM to SCAL translation, let's say. Instead, what we got, uh, what we see is a separate daemon that is running in user space and performs the, the actual uh, translation. And that surprised us a bit, uh, just because we, we thought that the intention of SCAL was exactly to uh, to be extensible uh, by making use of plugins and not with uh, separate demons uh, to be run. Um, yeah, so this is actually the core issue of my uh, the core the core issue that that I have um, I'd like us to discuss. So um, on one side we have Skull Skull who uh, who has um, UBus API and various extensions which help Skull provide parameters and objects on the UBus API. Uh, so I could say, I see this as UBus API being on top, and the various models being on bottom. So 
control is on top and providers are on bottom. So from UBAS we get, we extract some uh, parameters which are implemented as SCAL modules. Uh, so basically on top we have UBAS, on bottom we have SCAL modules and uh, SCAL plugin API uh, helps facilitate this kind of one direction approach. So we have uh, a SCAL module um, accesses some system property via UCI or any other backend and exposes it in a data model specified way on UBAS. Um, so that's SCAL. On the other side we have ADBCM which has if we maintain the same um, top bottom view on in ADB story, the CM story, the, the top would be where the interface to all other configuration um, agents, be it CWMP, be it web interface, be it command line. So that's on top. And then on bottom we have scripts or XML file directly via, via the data model, which actually implement the property parameter object storage. Um, so what I'm saying is that we have two, two um, systems and what, what your question was is in the, the, the role of SCAL in this uh, bridge demon that I wrote was reverse as what re reversed to what was expected. So it was in a way expected to use the a plugin API and not the UBAS API. Is this right? Hello? Yep. Yes. We are just trying to understand your point. Okay, so I can continue and, and then just to summarize it. So the, the core issue is that, I mean, it's, it may not be an issue per, per, per itself, but it's what I see as uh, a challenge that we can explore and see how, we, how to best deal with it. So um, <coughs> the UBAS API of SCAL is as I see it, intended to provide access to parameters which are stole, stored in uh, UCI or configuration files or UBAS and it is seems, seems uh, the requirement of integration between CM and SCAL was to keep the API if we maintain this, this paradigm that I just introduced. So CM, the requirement was to be able to attach other agents on top of CM. And to, to do this we have to put SCAL um, under CM and to use SCAL uh, as a provider we have to use it via the UBAS API. Since um, Currently, I, I didn't see how uh, it it could work the other way around. Okay, okay. Um, well, maybe what I can suggest probably is that we will still think about it. Just at least till tomorrow, maybe we can have a separate call on the specific in, on this specific integration issue um, and going into details together with Mauro of the of the solution my comment was mostly regarding the possibility to extend SCAL via plugins but as far as I understand from your comment in order to meet our integration requirements the way you choose was probably the, uh, the 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 only way, at least for seen right now, to to do this integration. Uh, 
Um, I, I I would like just to um, add one more point. So the the current status of integration is is at as I as I said, but um, I don't know if there are any comments from Felix regarding uh, the Scala API and how 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 this integration was expected. Um, <clears throat> yeah, I can I can uh, give some quick comments on that. So um, what I what I expected or what I what I designed for in this case um, was to be able to um, allow access to uh, CM configuration parameters uh, via Scal itself um, to make sure that you could use Scal uh, to be able to have a migration path between different data model providers. So you could have uh, CM integrated in there, you could have the JSON plugin, and you could start building your data model from multiple plugins and, uh, and then have it something like the tier 69 client uh, access only SCAL uh, to be able to access all those parameters. Now, of course, there will be some transition phase where SCAL isn't ready yet to deliver all of CM's functionality, so for the time being, uh, the client might still uh, need, uh, or it might still need the possibility uh, to use its native API to be able to connect to CM. Um, but in, in, uh, as a, as a long-term goal, I would say um, it would be useful to have uh, all, the, all the different parts that provide data models just integrate as SCAL plugins so you have one consistent view, even if you spread it out to multiple providers. Hi, this is John McQueen, uh, Broadcom. I, I'm a, I have a very basic question about, you're talking about cable modem APIs or data model to uh, can you give me a, when you say the word cable modem, are you talking about that entity itself, the actual cable modem MTA part of the device, or are you talking about more as a cable modem router? What the control and the configuration? I wasn't actually talking about cable modems. Okay. Um, cable modem, so like a data model that could actually uh, get information, get set information about the cable modem. Because yeah. there's very little that you can set really in a cable modem. Most of that provisioning and configuration happens between the cable modem and the CMTS itself. There's a lot of information that you may want to get. Yeah, and that's uh, that's easy to do. I mean, you could write a plugin that provides access to uh, some API that the, that the cable modem has. So one thing you could do is, uh, I, I, in, in the, in the SCAL API, I already have a, a JSON plugin, which basically has a bunch of uh, fairly low-level backends, like one UCI backend, one UBUS backend, and a few of those others. Um, and then you define a set of JSON files where you can parameterize those backends, where you can say, okay, I'm taking these low-level chunks, and I'm building a data model, for instance, the tier 69 data model uh, of these chunks and provide a consistent view. So the JSON basically tells it to, uh, to be able to access this parameter. You go to this back and you pass in these parameters. Uh, and uh, then you, from the result that you get, you take this and this value. Um, is that something, is that data model something that you shared previously? Or is that just something that you have that you're, you're talking about? referring to? Uh, so um, what I'm referring to is, is uh, the code that I've, I've already built. And uh, it's, some, it's something uh, I think as a proof of concept this already works. There are some, some features missing before I can uh, declare this uh, or proper beta that people can build on. Um, mm -hmm. But I think I'm getting there. So the functionality that I'm describing already exists. Okay, and, and and the end goal is to is to really want to circle around a common data model for CMs, really. Well, it's not just one common data model, but to have infrastructure so that you can 
uh, you're right. able to provide multiple different data models uh, sharing the same code in, on the back end side. Okay, right, right. Uh, so so uh, I think one thing, one way we could look at this is, is what are the what are the things right now that Felix needs to do to get us to a point where this is um, this is you know justifiably beta um, and uh, and this is uh, and fulfills the needs of everybody involved here. Um, there was some talk about you know we need to have the ability to add and remove objects. There was some talk about um, eventing that that uh, needs to be added. What what are the things that that are, are there additional features? Are there additional things we, that need to be done um, so we can move this forward? Um, hi, all. Can I think? Hello. Yep, I can hear you, Sukru. Ah, as I'm not used to use this uh, chat program yet, I was chatting with Private about something else with Dennis, and my comments were on that, that uh, something related to our application that Dennis is working for us. And I saw that they went all on the uh, general chat, so I just didn't want to create any misunderstanding. The topic the, uh, was completely not related to scale or purple or anything. It okay. was very fast comment for our own application, and it was a good feedback from Dennis for us. Thank you, thank you, Sukru. Thanks for yeah. clarifying that. Sorry for the no uh, worries. Okay. Um, I wanted to continue about uh, scale, and I was getting there, but we got some kind of sidetracked anyway. So, um, hey, excuse me, I have, a, I, have a, I have a question before we continue. Go on. Is there a document describing the overall architecture for what your solution? So that, because I think that at least for me being new to the discussion, um, and I don't know all, all the background behind this, it would be really helpful if there was some kind of diagram or something. And I looked on the site and I wasn't able to find anything. Yes. Is there such a document um, today? There is on the um, the OpenWRT TR069 um, base camp. Um, I will get the link to that. Um, but there is there is a kind of uh, the general agreement and the um, the diagrams that were made when we were in Paris, and then um, that is kind of the the working document we're working from. Okay, thank you very much. No problem. Okay, can I just uh, before continuing what I wanted to say? So about the diagram. Um, the diagram that I had uh, last submitted to Basecamp is correct in in that it reflects correctly the ADBCM side integration of um, scale, but um, the scale side of integration is uh, as as I had said before a, a bit reversed since I'm, I'm I'll get to it in a bit. So. Uh, what I expected from Scale API and still is not available, and Felix said that th th those would be um, in the next version, I think. So the, feature, the the things that are missing are crucially object object operations. Currently, Scale only uh, exposes parameter parameters, get them set. However, not object instances, so that's a really big, really big um, thing, probably. Um, and um, then we get then we get to what I was talking about, the top and bottom sides. So, um, UBus API is where the parameters are supposed supposed to be visible from, get and set and soon objects get add and remove. Um, however, in the in in Skull's plugin API, there there aren't um, operations to be able to from one plugin or module to ask Skull itself 
if 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 this plugin or another plugin has some information. So, um, for example, this is one of the reasons why UBus API is uh, actually the integration side of of uh, ADB CM to scale integration because through UBus it is possible to get and set everything. Uh, however, through the API, it is only possible to expose stuff to uh, to UBus. The parameters can be uh, exposed to Skull's uh, UBus view. However, it can you cannot as a as a module in Skull, uh, one cannot uh, let's say look back to Skull itself to say. Uh, to fetch another parameter, so that's <coughs> that's. I think that complicates the matter further. And one final one final uh, item. Just, and just a quick question in in between. Um, what do you need this for? Well, for example, in uh, the ADB solution, there are quite a lot of handlers which um, need to fetch sub sub parameters or uh, if, if fetching the parameter they uh, call into CM itself to fetch a related property mm -hmm. so that um, so that the property being fetched can be calculated or uh, looked up correctly so I don't have an, uh, an exact an exact um, Example, but I'm 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 know for certain that this is used in CM ADB CM solution, and I think that the guys can verify. Wouldn't it make sense to do this uh, loopback internally within the plugin? Uh, well, it it would be possible. However, uh, I see if, if the migration path is on the way, maybe. The loopback would be um, a solution that a preferable solution. And okay, we. But um, anyway, so are you saying that you would prefer that the API from modules to scale is only exposed and not get back anything? So well, it depends. So uh, until now, I wasn't aware uh, that that CM needs this. And before I I can say whether this make whether this approach makes sense to me versus the other, uh, I need to see why this is needed or what for to see if this is something that's that's worth keeping in the new migration path or if it's something. Uh, that we should rather incrementally migrate uh, away from. Mm, okay, well, I th I think <clears throat> so. I think we can we should th this this specific issue we should um, revisit. But I I, mm -hmm. I still think that uh, it might prove a very very um, crucial to say so. Dennis, yeah, so, so I would say um, let's take this particular discussion uh, uh, outside of this meeting later and let's just collect all the information of where and how this is used and I will review all of that and then I will make some suggestion. I mean if if we decide that this is worth keeping um, then I, I can certainly add this loopback functionality. Uh, it's just that uh, I don't have a use case in mind uh, where I think this is useful, so I need more information to be able to to uh, see whether this is worthwhile. Uh, so, uh, yeah, I agree with Felix. Uh, Dennis, um, Felix, and uh, the folks at ADB, uh, you know, I encourage you to kind of talk through what it, what your what exactly is going on, and, and so we can we can get this, uh, so we can kind of figure out a solution to this problem and what the kind of recommended solution is. So. I agree. So we agree as the DB side. We can discuss this later on in a separate meeting. Yep, definitely. Uh, maybe 
what I can suggest, but I don't know, this would probably require uh, Luca and Dennis approval. We can also send their solution uh, to also if preliminary to, to Felix in order to have an evaluation or if you want to discuss on some precise code uh, together with our uh, GitLab uh, account that everyone there is, is uh, can, can access to. Yeah, I think it makes sense to put that to GitLab and then uh, I can take a look uh, because I, I definitely need to see the code uh, to be able to get a clear sense of uh, what's going on and what's needed. All right, I, yeah, well, I think that's a good idea from our end, so definitely. Uh, hello again. Before we move away from Scott topic, I have one question to Felix. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, if you remember, Felix, uh, like some months ago, we had discussion about uh, extended bus over network. Yes. And our proposal was a WebSocket solution. Mm -hmm. Actually, yeah, in the chat, uh, I should apparently I was discussing about that if to bring it up if or not, uh, because Dennis is working on the solution for us as well, and he had given us some good fact about our intention. Uh, I and I remember you had mentioned about Scal there as well. Very, are you also intending to using Scal uh, to communicate between the different gateways as well, or are you intending to using Scal only for? Uh, uh, not remote connection, but only on its own uh, device. Uh, so far, uh, Scal is not intended to provide any form of remote connectivity. I think uh, this wouldn't fit very well for, for the use case. Uh, Scal is intended primarily as a local abstraction layer for, uh, for building data models and for, that include fine-grained access control and things like that. And I think any any form of uh, network connection between devices uh, is is a separate use case that should be handled by a separate component. Okay. And, uh, unfortunately, I have not had time to evaluate the WebSocket solution in detail, um, but I I still think that this is something uh, that should be separate from Scal or UBus. Yeah, yeah, I agree. This is why I brought the question so that uh, actually, even though in your uh, case Scal exists still an application that on top makes the device communication is a point. There's mm -hmm. an, another uh, component. Yeah, that's good yeah. to know. Okay, thank you. All right. Um, so do, so do we have a... I mean... Oh. <coughs> um, I want, I just would, um, before moving from scale, I think I, I would like to reiterate and or expand of on what is the biggest point that I'm uh, worried about with SCAL and ADB CM software going forward. So, um, let's say we agree that, that, that there needs to be a migration path uh, where, where, where both CM and SCAL are used with with each with their own APIs, but one of the specific integration goals given by ADB was to keep API the, to keep the old API between ADB CM and any of its agents. So th that th this point, I cannot see how we get from here to having only SCAL. Uh, Especially if, uh, let's say that we keep the API, and that means keeping CM's um, data model view, then if we have SCAL, then we need to do two-way synchronization of data models between them, because, um, because um, CM clients need to do both operations, and uh, SCAL clients, which are UBUS, UBUS API, then they all need to do operations on the data model. And um, I mean, I w just want to express that this, from a design perspective, is very. I'm I, I am uneasy with having um, 
I, I don't, I'm not sure how to go with forward with this uh, model where we have two components responsible for managing data and exposing it to other agents, data, uh, managing data models and exposing it to other agents. Uh, that's why the, the current solution is one way and so we hoped that we would have some better understanding after at this point. So I think that we should um, see the, the goal. So is the goal to have two, two components which synchronize data between them or is the goal to merge one component into other? So that, that's the biggest point. Uh, I could, I could okay. make a suggestion here. Um, I think one of the ways uh, in, in which this could work is uh, if you had on, on, on one side um, you have a plugin to SCAL which, um, which provides uh, the CM data model and which might have uh, another private socket for any, things, uh, any of the things that SCAL cannot handle yet. So on the other side you would have uh, an adapter that uh, provides CM's previous API but maps it to SCAL for the data model parts and communicates with the private uh, connection to the CM plugin for cases where uh, this has not been properly implemented in SCAL yet. So in this case you wouldn't need synchronization and any kind of external services that previously relied on CM uh, can still talk to CMs through SCAL but can get, get the extended data model view with the extra parameters from other plugins as well. Okay, in, in theory, uh, I mean, it makes sense but um, still, uh, as I said, the, the, then, then again we have the limitation of keeping CMs API and uh, integrating it, uh, extending it to support the SCAL use case. So, and and then um, and then we have um, the, the, for example, event facilities, which would which requires uh, event loops or uh, special listeners. I mean, um, I just I'm pointing out my my. Um, everything that I'm worried about so that we have we are on the same page regarding all the future. So for for the simple case of um, just opening up other sockets um, you can uh, you, you can create um, uh, uloop uh, data structures within plugins because the main process runs uloop as well so uh, there is an easy possibility to open up extra sockets regarding uh, other kinds of events, so configuration change events and uh, other high-level things like that. This is something that I intentionally did not build into SCAL yet because this is something I think the, 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 the different solutions from ADB, soft at home, etc., they have completely different approaches to how to deal with these kinds of events. And I think uh, trying to build all of these models into SCAL would create a, a huge amount of extra complexity. And this is an opportunity to be able to figure out something new that serves the purposes of the various implementations. But that requires taking a close look at, at uh, what is really needed in terms of use case and not in terms of how, how it's implemented currently. So this will require some separate discussions, and we we need to figure out how to how to do that. I already have some some ideas. For instance, I think it's it gets too complex if we have if if the system itself tries to keep track of global changes to every single configuration parameter, especially because in most cases that's not needed. Most clients only watch uh, a specific set of parameters and they're only interested in those. And this is something where uh, pulling the values of uh, given parameters at a convenient point in time when a global event comes in might actually simplify things a lot without causing too much overhead. 
this is something where there's still some design work that needs to be done, but this is uh, it's necessary to figure out these things anyway uh, to be able to follow through with the with the goals uh, that Scal was created with. Because uh, I mean, one of the big goals here is converging to to a common implementation for many parts in widely different stacks, and for that we need to be able to figure out what's really needed. And I think this is something might still take some time, but this is for, I, I think, follow-up milestones. This is uh, uh, too much for, for the initial beta release of Scal. I'm just curious if uh, ADB side is willing to uh, loosen up the initial requirements because that would change the story or the landscape a bit. So, well, uh, One comment from our side could be, okay, we definitely gave the requirement to Duke and Dennis of keeping other clients' interface to CM untouched. So uh, that's because we have a lot of different clients that need to access the data model anyway, whatever part of the data model, through the CM, and we really have a properly integrated and properly tested interface. At so as, as a first stage, we wouldn't like to, to change it. So, but we we are open to to seek for alternatives in the long run. So, the final goal would be okay to substitute everything with uh, Scal. That's fine. But we have to to plan a migration path in which we start using TR069 plus the CM plus Scal and all other clients are just behaving the same they were behaving before. And then, uh, if, if we can find the proper solution minimizing the impact on the other clients, maybe with a common interface, uh, we can also think of changing their interface uh, to make them talk to SCAL, well, sorry, talk to CM through SCAL, as Felix was mentioning. Uh, but that will def definitely require some changes in our API. So uh, let's see it as a step-by-step -step approach. So we are um, on the back row. And, I have uh, a quick question regarding regarding these requirements. Uh, so what if in, instead of CM providing the CM API, we would have a compatibility daemon that provides the CM API, so leaving all of the other clients untouched, but would tunnel parts of the requests, namely those requests that go directly to the data model, through SCAL, but like implementing the same API. Um, would that be a workable solution even for, for the first phase, because it would leave all the tested code of the other clients untouched? That could be a solution, but please keep in mind that DCM has been validated against uh, quite a lot of different clients making requests concurrently under heavy condition and stress test of the board. So mm -hmm. the same reliability must be granted uh, for the uh, CM uh, substitution, let's say. Mm -hmm. Pas Pasquale here, I want, uh, Pasquale here, sorry, I just want to, to drop a comment here that is related to the performance. So. Uh, adding additional daemon that uh, are acting as a proxy or call it as you prefer. On the paper, of course, there are no issue at all, but we may find, I don't know, performance, first of all, issue other than, you know, compatibility, stability and, and everything like this. Synchronization uh, against uh, different multiple, you know, setting or getting parameter and so on. So, I tend to, I'm not saying not at all, but mm -hmm. I would like to dig a bit more before giving a, a, a yes, because I don't want also to waste your time, so for you to develop something that then in the end we may have some doubt it can work at all. Mm. Um, I'm mainly suggesting this because uh, it, it would certainly get us uh, a bigger step closer to being able to put things through Scal, and it's something where um, you don't have to re-evaluate um, accessing the whole data model and all the different parameters because we're not dealing, we're not 
swapping out high-level parts yet. We're simply swapping out some low-level protocol part in between. I understand. I understand. At the same time, you should also understand our position in the sense that we I, are I do understand piece of code in it's millions and millions of devices. We already did the integration, the validation, the stability, the performance check in millions and millions of devices and in tens even more of different ACS. So uh, mm. we must be very, very careful. Uh, yes, and I would like to uh, address that, that point by saying that this is something, this issue will come up anyway because uh, no matter how we approach this, uh, the long-term goal is, is uh, at, that, that you stated is something that will have to involve doing uh, or a lot of retesting of individual components. And there it matters how we spread out uh, this testing. If we uh, delay some of the core changes until a very light, late point where it has some effect on the, on the design and might slow down the design phase, and later on will result in, in having to do a huge amount of testing work on, on the whole system. Whereas if we start early with some of the refactoring, uh, the testing could already begin for, uh, for the low level parts and uh, you could then, uh, you might then later have more time uh, to be able to carefully test the high level parts once we make it to that phase. Oh, well, again, I'm not saying no since the beginning. I, I never say no by the beginning, by principle, okay? What yeah. I'm saying is that uh, I would like to better dig your proposal and mm -hmm. maybe make a thought if we may find alternative, even alternative solution that can, you know, grant us the, the, the compatibility, but at the same time that can allow us to make a step forward. Please sure, I'm open towards that as well. I just don't want to uh, compromise the des design with uh, too many uh, considerations early on that detract from, from the end goal. Because yeah, yeah, uh, sure. my prim primary objective is to make sure that the design that we end up with is inherently simple and scalable. Yeah, yeah, sure, makes sense, okay. Uh, sorry guys, uh, I, anyway, just, you know, uh, I have to leave, unfortunately, because I have another call with, uh, you know, still the U.S. and due to the time, I'm in hurry stage. So I let you, by the way, continue the discussion and, you know, by the way, there is Matteo and all, uh, the other team in ADB over there. So sorry, but I have to leave. Yep. Thank you very much, Pasquale. Okay, thank, thank you. you. Bye. Yep. So, yeah, um, and thank you. Thank you, Dennis, for uh, working this and integrating and uh, finding this uh, bring up these points that need to be yep. discussed further. So. Yes, thank you, Dennis. Uh, so I, I think we should probably, um, since it's been, since we're about, uh, we're almost 50 after, we should probably, we certainly need to move on. Um, what, I want, what are the clear um, next steps on this? Is this, is this a, uh, a meeting between ADB, Felix, Dennis, potentially, I suppose, soft at home to make sure that we're not going in a direction that doesn't make sense for them and is this uh, is that the next step that we all agree on? Um, yeah, so we can set up Doodle uh, yep. it would be helpful if it's I don't know if somebody from the US side needs to join but if yes we'll then we will huh? well, I trust you folks Just uh, you guys will do fine if yeah, you I'm just asking because it will be easier to find the slot yes, than we absolutely it, so. yes uh, no. So, Luca, if, sorry, uh, no. do you think that it will be feasible to put your cm to scale implementation on GitLab in order to to let Felix have a look at it before our yeah. discussion? I'm okay with that. Dennis, you? Uh, <coughs> yes. Yeah. Okay. That's so, sure. okay. fine from our end, yes. Great. You will do it on, on your own? So, no problem for our side. So. You can do it just so we don't fiddle with permissions and everything. You do it, uh, upload it, and give us uh, the right access. So when if we need something further developed, then we can do it. So I think you have the tar archive right from Dennis. Okay, so we will probably add it maybe to the current repository in which you could find also the CM and CWMP. So it's 
all all up there. Okay. Uh, so so for Doodle uh, General uh, next week we try to find some slot or. Hello. Yep. Yeah. All right. Sounds good. Uh -huh. yep. Okay. Sounds good. Mm -hmm. It's breaking right. up a bit. Okay, good. Then consider okay. it's sold. Awesome. All right, we will move on to our uh, our next topic. Uh, board farm updates. I don't have any. Is there anyone else here who's been doing anything board farm related? Okay. Well, um, uh, funding open WRT projects. Uh, we are still evaluating. Um, there's a proposal from Luca. There's a proposal from. Uh, from Felix and um, uh, I'm totally zoning on his name right now. Felix, help Daniel. me. Daniel, thank you. Uh, from Daniel, uh, those are both being being evaluated. Uh, the the big thing right now is we're waiting on the final uh, budget for uh, for um, Purple. Uh, they're just working that out in this week, so uh, we it's either going to be this week or next. So once we have that, it'll be a little clearer on what exactly and when we can fund things and all that stuff. So. Um, if you have additional proposals, please do submit them. Uh, again, we, we if you if you have proposals, we can we want to fund them and we want to uh, get lots of great proposals. So, uh, regulatory update. Uh, I don't have a ton. Uh, everything has kind of been put on hold with the new administration, um, with the inauguration tomorrow. Um, not a lot going on. A lot of changes at the FCC, from what I'm hearing. So. Uh, there's some some there. There were a few people who had sent some um, uh, some ideas on on proposals for that I'd seen on um, I sent to me personally and on ways that you could potentially uh, comply with the FCC rule and and limit uh, modifications as much as possible. Um, those were some of those were sent personally. There was another one I think on the buffer bloat list. Um, I think so. Um, there's a few out there, um, but we'll we'll keep going there. I, I don't have any update um, from Hauke on the EU side of this. I know that the Germany took their proposal a little bit more uh, aggressively than the FCC did. Um, so I, I'm not really sure on the update there, but I know that Hauke is um, talking with folks about that. Felix, are you involved in that at all? Uh, not really. No. Not really? Okay. All right. Um, Open WRT Summit. I don't really have an update there. Um, we're probably going to have to have a new another meeting. The committee does in the next uh, next few weeks, so we can so we can move forward. But we are going to be having committees to kind of take on some of the responsibilities to you know get additional sponsors and and things along those lines. So um, just uh, stand lookout. And if you're interested in being on the Open WRT Summit committee, please do um, please do uh, uh, let me know. Uh, we we want you. Anybody's welcome to be involved. Uh, a, a couple of meeting announcements. Um, the Carrier Interest Group has a meeting on January 31st at 9 a.m. Pacific time. If you're in that base camp, you will have probably know about it. Um, uh, if you are not on that base camp, uh, please please let me know, and I can probably uh, get you a, an invite. Um, and the uh, Data models and open WRT discussion. That's kind of a broad description, but the the topic that um, Sukru had had proposed to the open WRT list. We have a meeting that we agreed on. It's on January 23rd at 7 a.m. Pacific time. That is next Monday. Um, Sukru, do you have anything you want to say about that right now? Or uh, first, I would just like to thank you for organizing the meeting and everyone for participating. Uh, yeah, and I think today's meeting was also quite useful for uh, I, for us to get some idea as well about what's going on currently regarding data models in OpenWRT. And I started thinking if, uh, some uh, I we really did go to this technical details on Monday. Uh, just started thinking of have, if possibility of having SCAL running on top of a data model described like this. Uh, for integration to different data models as well, but on top there is a different OpenWR data model, which uh, of course uh, we will discuss on Monday. I will uh, uh, I will make some points and uh, why we need the data model. I'm trying to prepare a bit more uh, specific diagram 
and use cases. Uh, and there, of course, there will be some points that are not decided. There, there will be lots of technicalities that are not decided yet. Uh, and one of them, how to integrate, could be with other data models. And in that aspect, I was thinking scale could be maybe used, or is it aiming that? That's another technical discussion, of course. But yeah, looking forward to Monday uh, and to discuss with you guys. And hopefully, something good, we might bring it out. Definitely. Yeah. Great. Well, we're look, we're, I'm looking forward to it. I think it's going to be a really interesting topic on your proposal and how scale fits into that and some other, all the different sides to it. So it should be really interesting. Um, one one thing I did want to mention is I saw that uh, the lead folks had come out with their um, their release, or it's either near release or actually released, I think. Uh, there's 1701. Not release. released yet. Not so, released. So far, we only branched, but we are branched. preparing the release. Yeah. Okay. Well, uh, congratulations there. That's that's great to hear. Um, I I also saw that uh, Luca. I believe you are now a committer on lead. Um. Yeah. So basically, following up on the discussions. Uh, we had uh, before. I asked for uh, access, and uh, guys gave it to me. And uh, awesome. yeah, we went through the procedure. And uh, yeah, so uh, thank you, Felix, for for that again. Welcome. Thank you. That's great to hear. Um, any? I don't think there are there any updates additionally on the OpenWRT lead discussions after this. Other than that. So, uh, from my perspective, we're currently at, at the point where we've uh, we've agreed uh, that the uh, lead source code tree will become the new basis for anything if, uh, if we ever uh, get to the point where we actually merge the projects together. So, uh, we decided to grant all the OpenWRT ac uh, developers access to the lead tree and to work towards getting all the changes in OpenWRT that haven't made it to the lead tree yet integrated there as well. So we have one clean tree uh, that can be used as the basis for such a merge. Okay. And is, is there kind of a, a plan on how you get, how we get closer to that or kind of the final, I guess, the ultimate decision there? Uh, Eric, it seems like uh, uh, you haven't uh, had enough experience with the open source community. The plan is that there is no plan. Okay. <laughs> exactly. People ask me, I, I have to ask these questions. Yes, I, I, I figured there's no plan is the usual assumption. Um, but uh, There's a lot that we still need to figure out, yep. but we basically decided in the last meeting that there are some parts that regardless of where we end up, uh, this is going to be necessary anyway. So. Uh, we at least had some specific things uh, for people to do to move forward to that goal. Okay. Well, that's good. Uh, if there's, uh, as always, not that you need me to tell you, but if there's anything that my that I or, or anyone else at Purple can do, please do, of course, let us know. Sure. Thanks. Um, uh, any, we have three minutes left. Anyone else have any topics that they want to discuss or uh, anything that hasn't been, uh, has been uh, talked about so far? All right. Well, then, uh, hearing nothing, I will let you go two minutes early, and you can enjoy your two minutes before your next meeting, if you likely have one. Um, thanks, everyone, uh, for joining. Just um, one more thing oh, yeah. before we depart. So I open Doodle. I'm sending it to everybody who I think is should be involved. So please distribute the link, and Eric, you will get it as well. So. Okay. Sounds good. If I missed somebody, please add. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Yep. Thanks. Thank you very much. Everyone have a good day. Bye. 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 Bye.